Hello, 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 Charles here for MGN again, and wow. Oh, wow, what what can I say? Deathloop's finally hit. The reviews are incredibly high for an arcane game. And there is good reason to that, but the reason is very negative. If you like Dishonors, there's borderline nothing here for you. Absolutely nothing. This is the most watered down, commercialized version of Dishonored we could have ever got. That being said, let me get into this. But before I start, there will be a link to a written review which will go into a lot more detail than this video review because I could literally talk for 30 40 minutes about all the problems this game suffers from. Right, with that out of the way, um, excuse the video footage, it's very choppy. There's a lot of skipped frames, but Nothing I could do in OBS would prevent that. No setting would, would stop that. So um, apologies for the crappy video, but this was the best the game would allow me to get. It still runs on the same engine as the Sonic 2, the Void engine. And it still uses a Tech 5. And it still has all the problems that the engine had when the Sonic 2 released on PC. Right, so let's get into the actual game then. Um, right, everyone kind of knows the story. You're stuck in a time loop, you've lost your memories, and you've got to work out what the hell's going on. But, um, what can I say? I was expecting a lot more from the world. I mean, Arcane for me, fundamentally, Arcane's had two good things. Fundamentally, their world building has been absolutely fantastic, whether that's environmental details, little things littered around, the voiceovers and the dialogue and the little things you can hear from NPCs. That, that's been their main forte, that and the sandboxy gameplay. Neither were present. But on the story front, I was actually shocked. I mean, they've gone for two people of colour as the main characters, which I have no problem with. And the game director is actually black as well, I believe. A person of colour. But somehow the writing comes across to me as borderline racist. It's, it's just swearing. It's just edges trying to be 80s but not really landing it nothing like shaft or anything like it. it's just trying to be really edgy 80s style dialogue i guess but i'm not sure it's even that it it honestly feels like a, a juvenile who's got into uni only because he has money and has managed to get a job writing for a game because mummy and daddy has a load of money that that's the only way i can put it it's just constant swearing all you get between Cole and Julia is swearing. What the shit? What the F? Will you F off? Why the F am I talking to my gun? Where the F did I put that? F, 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 S, S, F, F, M, F. Just constant swearing. Literally, all their conversations tend to be 90% of the time. It's just swearing at each other. And I'm all for swears. They have their moments. They're very powerful words that can really amplify certain moments, but... It's all the dialogue is. Even when you listen to the NBCs, you can't listen to a sentence without a swear cropping up. It's just vulgar, repulsive swearing constantly. There's no attempt to build the world within the dialogue or really establish any history. There's technically some, but it's, it's borderline nothing. It feels like no real attempt to actually build a world or a story through the narrative. So I would have hoped that they tried to do that from the gameplay and the worlds. I'll get to that later, but unfortunately, no. Now, another thing I want to quickly mention, and you'll, you'll see my comparisons in the written article, but um, the art is terrible. The island just, again, doesn't feel like they wanted to build a world. The island just feels like it's there to exist as a game, just for your amusement. The props are just placed randomly. There's no real thought. No, none of the rooms have any life from, like, the picture you'll see in the article I've written. There's a Dishonored 2 room and it's got damp walls, wallpaper curling up, things on the floor, rusty sink. It tells a story. Nothing in Deathloop, environmentally, tells a story. It just feels suddenly put together there for the player's amusement. That's it. And the use of colours, the general overall art style, the filters, they're just horrible. It, it's, it's, for me, it's the worst looking arcane game by Miles. I'm pretty sure whoever their lead artist is, they left before this game was made because it, it just does not hold a candle. 
and then we get to the gameplay. I'm, I'm going to say again, please read the review. I'll go into more detail, but the gameplay is it's terrible. It, it's just bad. Arcane have never been good at guns. They have not got better at guns. The mixing's terrible. The feedback's terrible. The, the way you can just get a starter pistol and literally snipe everyone with one bullet to the head and kill them. It, it's just the whole... The whole system with guns is just awful. Kickback, feedback, sound mixing, general gunplay, how it feels, just all awful. Which would be fine if we had the typical arcane gameplay. But it's not there. Most of the time there's only two paths to do things. There's not sprawling options. You haven't got all these multiple choices. You can't go off to this area and find something you never would have found as a player. Unless you search for it. The, the areas are tiny. You don't have many stealth options like you do in Dishonored. It's really focused around the guns. The level design's okay but doesn't really match Dishonored. It's just... It's just lacking. It feels like they've looked at their games and gone Dishonored requires too much of the player to think for themselves. So let's water it down. Put loads of messages everywhere for them. Make the world small, give them a limited pass while still making out there's a choice, even though it's borderline non-existent. And let's think for the player. Let's treat them as dumb little plebs who can't think for themselves. That's how it comes across to me. It, it's just, it's just terrible. There's one area and there's loads of buildings and I thought, all right, let's see if there's some windows I can go into. Like you can in Dishonored. There's always like windows you find open. You can go in there and you'll find a whole little side mission. Just a whole built area with multiple floors, guards and everything to explore. Maybe a little voice log somewhere. There's none of that here. It's as linear as it can be. In fact, there are straight up points in the game where it's A to B and it forces you to be A to B. There is no choice. This is just incredibly linear. And it doesn't get bad. The AI is terrible. I mean, uh, I've got examples that I've wrote down in the article. Uh, I'll give some now. Um, I've shot AI. Well, there's a group of four of them in the head. And they've died. And the NPCs don't react. They just do not react at all. There's been moments where I've stealth killed someone and their body's fallen into the ally and the ally does not react. There's mines. Now, you would think when you're right near an enemy, you walk into a mine, it explodes and you scream, you're going to get their attention. Nope. Shoot it with a loud gun, however, and suddenly they think about it for half a second and go back to their normal ways. Shoot a mine with a silent gun. So the mine still explodes. They don't react. So the AI is literally just programmed to react to loud gun noises, and that is it. And it even seems to be proximity based, because you can be behind concrete walls and the enemies will hear you on the other side. There's no way they should actually be able to hear you. There's, closed, there's doors closed off, everything, yet they can still hear you through the walls. Just because you're in proximity. The AI is the most garbage, basic AI imaginable. It's just dumb. And the objectives don't get much better. There's an objective right in the early part of the game. Find the battery. The batteries are right there in front of you, in front of the floor. But here's the kicker. There's one with an objective marker. If you go charge a battery that doesn't have an objective marker and then put it in the machine, the objective doesn't disappear. It's so scripted that if you don't pick up the battery that effectively the marker is tied to, the objective won't disappear. So you have to pick up the specific battery. You can't just freeform it. Oh, I'm going to pick up that battery over there. Put that in. Nope. You have to pick up the specific battery. Everything in this game is just scripted to insanity. There is no freedom. Everything is A to B, 1 to 0 scripting. It, it never gets any better than that. I mean, when you start the game, it seems kind of cool. There's definitely enemy patterns, yada, yada, yada. But then you realise the time of day... You have to load in as a state. You can't organically, like Majora's Mask, just watch the day go by and see people go go about their own little routine. No. It's set, loaded states with set AI patterns, set AI placements, set everything. And the levels are tiny. They're absolutely tiny. I'm pretty sure one of the very first missions in Dishonored 2 actually has much more content and more to see and explore 
than any of these levels combined and there's only four of them and the whole spill of the game is going through all four of them finding little clues then going back using those clues killing the bosses and then find out what order you've got to do it in to break the loop so you're just basically doing the same thing over and over again until you find the right order and the bosses ain't any fun either there's a video that should be uploaded, might already be uploaded, of me killing Fear in Fristrad Walk. I literally just get some grenades, open the door, throw them in, shoot her a few times, done. Grab her gun, shoot a couple of enemies that appear, run straight to the exit. It's just mind numbingly boring. Yeah, you can disable the reactor in there, and that is required to do the other bit, but. The actual taking down of the bosses, which is supposed to be the crux of the game, working out how to take down the bosses, these big visionaries, your main targets, and they're just as dumb as any NPC. There's no challenge. There's no real build-up in dialogue between them or anything. It's just a typical generic NPC that's effectively got a boss marker tied to them. That, that's how it feels. Yes, they look different, but that's it. That's as far as it goes. They're not smarter. They don't have really anything special about them. Oh, okay, they go red and that one has a bit of extra power so she does more damage. Doesn't matter, you just throw grenades at her. Boom, she's dead. Because the AI is so dumb that when it sees a grenade, it just tries to jump out of the way. It will even jump into a wall. It doesn't even see the objects around it. It's just programmed to jump and that's it. it it's, it's just awful. There's nothing I'm really good I can say about it apart from the general movement, the moving, the jumping and the sliding feels good, but... Uh, that's it. The game's just incredibly disappointing and it feels completely inorganic. The whole world feels like a game. Dishonored 2 was a fictional world, but it felt real. Through the world building, through just the design of the levels, how open they were, the NPC dialogue, the story dialogue, the notes you found around, the explorability, it felt organic. It felt like a world. This does not. And there's also way more loading times than you'd expect as well, I think. And the loading takes about 16 to 20 seconds on a 3,500 megabytes a second NVMe SSD. And a GTX TATOC. Loading times are ridiculous. I don't know what happened there. I mean, Dishonored's known for its incredibly quick loading times. That's completely gone out of the window. Huh? It's just gone. <laughs> All right, is there anything positive I can say about the game? The general idea is okay. Despite being quite undercooked, yeah, you get residuum and then, yeah, you can use that to infuse your items and keep them for your next loop. But there's not much detail to that either. It's just little generic little trinkets you can find that do the typical things like reduce a bit of redu uh, reduction of cooldown or reduce um, recoil. But even then, going into cooldowns, you've got a dash and you can just spam that dash as many times as you want. There's no stamina, there's no nothing. Just don't think, just do. And the special powers you can get, you can use them five or six times before they go on cooldown. Again, it's a don't think, just do. In Dishonored 2, you had to plan that. You had mana. You had to plan that. In this game, don't. Don't, don't, don't think, just use it. Who cares? Think? What, what? What's thinking? Uh, it's kind of cool, the concept. You got, you're on an island and you've got to explore it throughout multiple times of the day and yada 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 and find out the right order to do things but it's all set states you can't just go to the island and explore the entire island and watch things go on like you could Majora's Mask it's even more basic than an N64 game it is loaded set states every time you load to that level at that time of day you know exactly how it's going to play out and you just got to do that over and over and over again until you find the right order to do it and that would be okay if the levels are more open, they're more like Sonic, there was fun things to do, there was little notes everywhere, the gunplay actually felt good, but none of it does. It's just an incredibly average effect. It's it's just watered down Dishonored to ridiculous extents. It's just dilution. It, it feels to me that Arcane have basically took everything that made them good, thrown it out the window, dumbed it down to get higher scores and higher sales. Which hasn't actually paid off if you look at the Steam sales, but that's another story entirely. Performance, I advise people to yet again go look at my review, um, the written review. I've got an 8700K, 4.7 gigahertz across all cores, 16 gig of DDR4 RAM at 3600 megahertz, low latency. 
and an RTX 3080 EOC Asus TUF and with some tweaks and G-Sync off which you have to do to try and reduce the bloody stuttering I can go as low as 80 FPS I can go as high as 120 and maintain that but there's, as you'll see, and as I've written down, there's a jutter with the mouse. The same kind of jutter that you had with Dishonored 2. It feels horrible at high frame rates. The only way to make the game feel smooth is to cap it at 60. But then it's not really that smooth. Because if you're used to high frame rates, 60 FPS with a mouse does not feel good at all. 120 feels significantly better, but there is no way in hell, even if it's sort of locked 120, to make the game feel good. And on top of that, I can't max out textures. If I put it up to highest textures, I lose about 10% performance. None of the settings gave me any performance, and the whole 10 gig of my GDR, GDDR6X memory is saturated. How a world this small, as effectively a level, it's not even a world, how a level this small can saturate that much RAM, I have absolutely no idea. It is a dumpster fire of a PC version, despite what certain people from certain well known organizations may say. The game is a dumpster fire, and if you don't believe me, go to the forums. There are people with 3080 Ti's, 5900 X Ryzen's, or even i9's that are having the exact same problems. I've seen people with 3080 Ti's have to reduce it down to 1080p just to maintain frame rate on a 3080 Ti. Which also begs the question, why would you release a game with this ridiculous demand, which there's no justification of, during a period where there is a massive stock shortage and the price of everything is absolutely sky high. It's just an absolutely ridiculous business decision. I just, I cannot understand it. Again, I go into much more detail in my written view. I do advise everyone read that to get much more of a, an idea of where this game fails. And it does fail pretty much everywhere. This, this game is just... Um, it's a disappointment. It's not the arcane I know and love. The creator of Dishonored and Prey has left. And it feels like he was arcane. I'm never a fan of saying one person was a company. Or one person was the band. But their game, since they he's left, is Deathloop. And it absolutely sucks compared to their previous works. And looking at the leaks of Redfall. Horrible art. Unreal Engine 4. Generic looking shooter looter. I feel like Arcane has just absolutely died. The Arcane we know and love is absolutely gone. And I cannot be any more disappointed with that. Arcane were one of the few companies that actually put faith in the player. And it feels like they've took all that faith and thrown it in the bin. And they just tell you what to do. They don't give you any creativity. There's no real sandbox to be had here. It's just a generic liner roguelike shooter. That's actually got less variety than a roguelike. It's just mind numbing. Everything feels under bait. Levels load in select state. They play out the exact same way. You just gather resources, repeat the thing until you find out the right order. As Vars from Far Cry 3 would say, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting it to be different. This game is just not fun to play it's incredibly average i can only assume it's got 10 out of 10s from shields because it is objectively not a 10 out of 10 game even if you enjoy the gameplay and the gunplay even if you do somehow enjoy that there are so many rough errors to this game there's no way it could be given a perfect score there's nothing in this game that's perfect but i mean personally i would argue that no game's perfect but this game especially that there, there's no way this is a perfect game Imagine some people, given the roguelike era we're in, will get enjoyment out of this. But if you enjoy Dishonored, they do not buy this expecting Dishonored with guns. It's not even that. It technically is, but there's so much less choice. There's so much less world building. The dialogue so much worse. The narrative so much worse. The levels are so much worse. It I can't even liken it to Dishonored apart from it being incredibly watered down. It's not Dishonored with guns. It's a very watered down Dishonored with the horrible arcane gunplay. I'm going to have to give it a 6 out of 10. It for me is probably the worst game I've played this year. Bar a couple of indies. It's absolutely the worst AAA game I can think of this year. And maybe even previous years. Very disappointed. I miss the old Arcane. I think they're gone for good unfortunately. Looking at the Redfall leaks and looking at this product. I, it, 
it seems out the window. They seem technically inept. Why are they using a customized id tech 5 when id tech 6 and I think 7 might exist as well? 6 definitely does. I, I, I have absolutely no idea. This is just a, a disaster. Performance on PS5 is better but still has its issues. Uh, I just... I just don't know what happened here. All this money behind it, Sony and Microsoft, the amount of times it's had in development, the amount of marketing it's had, and this is the end product. I, I am just absolutely mind blown. 